Well, happy Monday, everybody. See what I did there? Uh, my name is Andy. Welcome to an exciting episode of Logic Live here on a Monday. It's a beautiful, albeit cold day, up in the uh, Hudson Valley of New York. But I'm super excited for today's show. My guest, John Gearing, is a flame artist based in New York. And if, if you know me, you know that I have a, a soft spot in my heart for Python scripting, for automating, for automating your workflow, for um, anything you can do to make uh, the, the, the process of being a flame artist that much more efficient. I'm all about, and that's what today's show is all about. So we are getting ready to roll. Oh, I see uh, Valentine, hello. Hey, Fred and Jeff Kyle. Thank you very much. I still got it. All right, let's see. Oh, well, except that I forgot that how quickly this, <laughs> this song ends. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Logic Live. Let's get rocking and rolling here. We're going to go to the slideshow. This episode of Logic Live is brought to you by AJA, together with Flame since 2006. That is my cursor. <laughs> Boris FX. Uh, not only do they make what has to be the, the best, pro uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the best image processing plugins in the business, they also make the most comfortable shirts. I've got to say, this is luxurious. And I just want to give a shout out to our friends at Boris FX uh, for making the best shirts in the business to go along with making the best plugins in the business. If you, <laughs> if you would like <laughs> anything that Boris FX has to offer, uh, including now Synthize, the amazing Synthize, you can save 15% with our new affiliate links by going to logic.tv slash Boris FX. How about we do a keyboard shortcut? There we go. Speaking of looking great, be sure to check out the Logic merch store for all the great stuff we have. Hats, fanny packs, stickers, books. Look your best while you're making your best. Oh, and I see here, uh, Jeff is agreeing with me. The shirts are comfortable. I am so right. <clears throat> I want to thank all of our patrons on Patreon. We could not do what we do here at Logic without your support. We are up to 158, I believe it is, patrons on Patreon. And uh, again, you know, the Logic community thanks you from the bottom of our hearts. We couldn't do what we've been doing for the last almost four years uh, if it wasn't for your support. If you'd like to become a patron and uh, support what we're doing here at Logic for as little as five bucks a month, you can go to patreon.com slash logic TV. Get yourself a challenge coin and access to the after show uh, and other exclusive content. Want to give a shout out to uh, my good friend and partner in Flame, Randy McEntee, for all the hard work he's been doing with Logic Academy Pro. Learn, connect, advance, Autodesk Flame. Check out Logic Academy Pro when you get a chance and see the uh, amazing educational offerings that we have. I know that there's been a, a new series out this past week, or the, in the past couple of weeks, rather, that our friend Christoph over in Hamburg made. That's Flame for Nuke Artists. So if you know anybody who's a Nuke Artist who wants to get into Flame, point them over at Logic Academy Pro. We had a user group in New York City uh, a couple of weeks ago that was so much fun. Uh, the turnout was great. Uh, the food was great. Uh, the pictures that Jeff <laughs> took were great. Brooks was there. No, it was the first in-person user group that we had in four years. And it was an absolutely wonderful time. Who dat? It was an absolutely wonderful time. Uh, looking forward to doing many, many more in-person user groups. Um, we have uh, a new one coming up. Actually, this... Wednesday, I'm going to Chicago for, hey, there's John. Um, I'm going to Chicago for the user group there. And uh, that's going to be a good time. I want to thank everybody who came out for the user group, everybody who participated, and of course, our sponsors. Now, I told you, like the Logic Fanny Pack, does it look any better than it does on Brian Bailey right there? Thank you very much. No, it was a great time. Uh, thanks for everybody again for coming out. And again, this Wednesday at 7 p.m., uh, we're going to be at Flavor. In, uh, in the lovely town of Chicago. Uh, with myself, Brian Higgins, uh, Randy McEntee are gonna be doing some presentations. And uh, Fred and Stefan from Autodesk are gonna zoom in. It's gonna be a great time. Wanna thank our friends at Synesis for supporting the, uh, the Flame community. And looking forward to seeing all of our friends in Chicago. All right, I'm gonna end the slideshow here for now and go back to my full screen. I'm gonna bring my guest on for today. Uh, like I said at the top of the show, his name is John Gearing, and uh, John is a flame artist based in New York and uh, works for Uppercut. And uh, I got on the, uh, the Python, I guess I started my Python journey back in, uh, it had to be 2018, with absolutely zero knowledge in programming. 
I just knew that um, I was doing a lot of the same things over and over and over again and uh, figured there had to be some way to automate that. And that started me down this kind of path where, you know, anytime I did anything more than a couple of times, I went, is there a way to, is there a way to script this? Or if I made a mistake, if I labeled something wrong, if I slated something wrong, you know, is there a way to do this? And so uh, you have taken that to the next level in uh, what you've done with uh, the uppercut workflow and then in all the stuff you've shared on the logic portal. So thank you for that from the community. Cool. And, uh, cool. and welcome Thanks, to Logic Andy. Live. Awesome. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, I think I had a kind of similar experience where I was doing plane for about 15 years. And then, uh, the, you know, we started to be able to use Python. And I was like, this is fantastic. Um, I'm going to use this everywhere I can. Um, but yeah, I'm not a programmer and just kind of fell in love with the things you, you could do. Um, and before we get going, I just want to give a quick shout out to Mike V because, you know, without oh, him, yes. like almost none of this happens. So, so thanks, Mike V. Yeah, thanks, um, Mike V. Mike uh, has, if, if, any, if there's anybody out there who has not installed the Logic Portal, please go ahead and install it. It's a repository of all of the Python scripts, batch setups, even links to uh, uh, install the Logic Matchbooks, uh, match, Matchbox collection. Um, it's great. And, and Mike maintains all that. And he is, you know, the wizard uh, behind the scenes who helps all of us, uh, you know, programmers to, uh, <laughs> right to get through our yep. frustrations and figure out why something isn't working so love mike v for sure yeah yeah definitely all right well i'm gonna right. uh bring up your flame and uh why don't we get rock and roll and you can take us through uh your your workflow cool um so i'm about to create a new project and basically you can't even launch a new project without kind of seeing some of the scripting happen um, so like immediately you see there's, you know, the scripts go out, look for a job folder. It can't find it. So it's like, do you want to create a new one? I'm going to hit okay to create a new one. And then because it's just called new project, it's not in our typical format. So it's giving me a warning, but I'm going to just say, whatever, it's fine. Just create those folders. And, um, we have some things that happen in the background and it, that adjust permissions. And we have a Slack bot that, um, monitors that stuff. So. Um, I won't show that, but uh, that's another thing you can can do is, um, you know, send things to a Slack bot to uh, automate it. Um, and if I go to where we keep our jobs, now we can see I have a new project here, you know, with all the usual folders. Um, so then when we go to start a project, what I normally do is I grab this. I'm sorry to interrupt, template. but uh, yeah, yeah. but this is so great because even... Like to this day, I have a, like a I have a template folder on my NAS that has the folder structure in it. And when I start a new project here, I manually I go and I duplicate it in the Mac Finder, and then I go and I manually name it, and then I manually create a Flame project, and I make sure I copy and paste the job folder name to the Flame project name because so many of my scripts are dependent on that. But what you've done mm -hmm. is you've just taken that to the next level and removed the you know five steps and the of course like the human error possibility of, of renaming that wrong. That's great. Great, great, great. Cool. Thank you. And I mean, the other thing I try to do is um, kind of format things the way I want it. So like everyone will hopefully follow the, the dating um, that's laid out there and it's, you know, today's date and all that happens automatically. All right. So let's go back to our archive template. I restore setups and I grab these. Um, and I can just restore that here. And you can see it's only about 47 megabytes. So once I restore this, it is happens super quickly. All right, so I'll close that and get out of here. And then I'll just expand this so you can see a couple of other things. Oops. Um, you see that there's these placeholders that's, you know, the date and stuff. So. I have another script that you can launch that is renamers, and then I'm going to replace all of those placeholders. And I'm also going to delete the default library because I never use that. So it gives you another warning. And uh, yeah, I want to just do all those things. So now all the dates have been changed. Um, so there, here, thanks. And then That's your great. project is pretty much good to go from there. Um, I just wanted to call out something. I know you, you, you mentioned it and, uh, and you, we intentionally skipped over it, but the use of Slack bots. You know, I know oh, yeah. I 
in some of the programming and some of the Python scripting that I had done over the years, I hit a wall and the wall was like, oh, well, this is something that's either like not exposed to the Flame API or it's something that just, there's no connection, there's no glue to get me from here mm. to here. And uh, the right. fact that you found um, the Slack bot as a, as a, the glue, as the, the, the if this, then that, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, can yeah. trigger uh, things that aren't, uh, that don't come natively built in uh, either to the API or the app is brilliant. And I encourage everybody to think uh, about things like that for their, um, you know, for their scripting needs. It's great. Cool. Thanks. Um, and then before we move on to conform, so I want to take a look at a few of the setups that uh, come in when I restore the, the project setups. One of them is Tim's fluid morph. I love this thing. Use it all the time. Uh, the other one, I showed this to Andy, um, and this is on the, the uh, logic portal, but this is one of my favorite things, one of my favorite setups. Oh, yeah, this is great. Um, I, I had no idea that this was on the logic portal. This is like, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm getting the sound effect ready. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm sure everyone has seen like the LS wireless um, uh, matchbox shader and I use it all the time. But what I rigged up was a way to basically, and I'll zoom in so everyone can see it, is you can basically track a point here, track a point here, and then you have an offset that will um, control it. So if I zoom in and hopefully you guys can see this, I can move it with axes, but I am actually controlling the, uh, the wireless shader this way. And if you look here, I have um, the controls that affect the wireless shader too. So if I just make this bigger, you know, that line is gone. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. No, it answers the That's thing. Sad. You know, like I remember one of the things always with with uh, LS Wireless was well. I wish there was some way to track the, you know, the tracker was built into the Matchbox. Well, it's not. But here's the solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. And this is yeah, yeah. expressions and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's one of my go tos. All right, so I'm going to just jump into a different project, and we're basically going to, because we just showed all those conforms um, at uh, the user group, and I put them on logic. So we'll skip mm -hmm. ahead to to when the conforms are done, and and we are basically in the process of switching to you know the open clipped unmanaged media workflow, um, and I wanted to come up with some scripts that help the team transition. So um, I'll run through a few of those. Um, so on my desktop, I got a 30, a 15, a 10, and then my sources sequence. And I've flagged three shots. I've colored them blue. And we're going to um, break those out and get those ready for, um, well, in this case, we're going to pretend that like other people are working on these shots. And we'll pretend that the first two were done on Flame, and the third one will be done in Nuke. Um, OK, so the first thing that I like to do once the conforms are done with this new published workflow well, new to us anyway, um, is duplicate the connected segments. And we'll, I'll add those above. So now those segments are in my 30, my 15. Um, oh, wait, I think I did the wrong one. Let's try it again. OK, there we go. All right, and now I don't need those in my um, sources sequence, um, and I want to publish just those three shots. So I'm going to unhide those, and I'll go to my little preset to unhide the blue ones. So now I just want to have those three shots that we're going to publish, and I have a script here that's UC publish, and here I can adjust the handles, I can control what version I want, and then I can turn off batch groups or not. So I'll just go ahead and create that. And this is just a normal like um, sequence publish. Mm -hmm. um, and then once it's done, it does a few things. Like it adds all of our shot folders automatically. It changes the names of the reels. And then it loads um, our batch template that we'll take a look at once it finishes prepping them. And all right, cool. It looks like it's done. All right, so we'll look at the first shot. And so it doesn't have the default like you know, mux and resize. This has like, you know, everything that we typically start with. Um, it also preps all your write files to make sure they're going to the right paths. And then this is that you can see my initials are here. Mm -hmm. um, 
so it basically does all the prepping for you. Um, and even it has a pre-rendered node here that just goes to the same um, spot. If I wanted to add another pre-render, I have another script that's add pre-render, and then you can pick like what your template is, like whether you're doing some paint, so making a clean plate, or if, whatever it is, some sort of retouch. So <laughs> I, no, like, I love this because I have. I'm going to show. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show a Python script at the end of this that I have for uh, slating, but part of it also builds the default batch setup for me. You know, mm -hmm. it takes what's published and builds the default batch setup, but I never thought to do that as one step. Like mm. I manually go and publish my shots. And then once the batch groups are created, I have a script that I run on the batch groups. I never thought about doing that as part of a published script. So this is great. Absolutely great. Love it. Uh, yeah, thank you. I think that means I'm lazier than you if I do it this way. Yes, but in the, <laughs> yeah, but in a, yeah. <laughs> we have a show title, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> lazier than Andy Milkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. So let's. Oh, so let's say I want to distribute those shots. Um, we have another thing that's. Um, that we use, and this is another Slack bot thing, but I can basically set up these shots to sync, and I'm not actually going to do it, but we could sync these shots to to Atlanta and uh, or LA. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's what's next on our list? All right, so we'll skip ahead to when um, the shots are done. So let me move these out of the way. Even your pre renders again. I I have. Separate. I have separate scripts to do pre, to add pre-render nodes. I never thought to make one that has a drop-down menu, you know, for each type of pre-render, whether it's paint or denoise or whatever. That's lovely. Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, actually, before we move on to the timeline stuff, I want to show one more thing. Okay, I'm, that was. These are just a couple of little scripts that just move files around or folders. Um, okay, so let me save that and get rid of this. And oh, for this demo, I'm just gonna change my initials for just to show that it, what it actually does. Hey, I know yeah. <laughs> They mean more. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I have another script. Um, and I'm just going to go UC batch load setups. Um, so we have a script and I can uh, see all of the batches that we have and I can filter this out. Like if I just wanted to load up 330, I could grab that or I could just find all of these zero zeros. Um, so it's just a way to like quickly load setups. Um, so let's grab, let's just do this one. And I, I showed you before that my initials were in there, but now if we go in here, everything basically should be set for you. So it's already changed it. I'm going to save it under your initials. Great, 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 great. Oh my God. So, yeah. so your, your script there, what it does is it, if I'm correct, right? It does a list of the directory of your, of your shots directory or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, then you can filter it, like you said, and, and and that's how you're loading the individual shots or batch setups. You're then using like a um, load and create batch uh, command or something, but it's based on that. That's where that pop-up window is coming from, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it basically creates the batch for you, appends it, and then adjusts the duration and changes the initials. That's great. That's uh -huh. great. Uh, cool. David Kreitz says, you. very cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so let's fast forward to shots or done. So let's go look at our timeline. Um, and now I have these three shots, um, but right now there's no connection to the, uh, the published ones. So I'm going to grab these and I'm going to copy them out, not, uh, not match them out, but like hold down alt shift if you're using flame hotkeys and like drag them out. And then if I open this one up, Grab this, grab this, shift control R for replace. Do the same with this one. And then finally this one. Um, 
And then let me zoom in on them so we can see. Um, I like to change the names so we can kind of reference what version it is. Um, and we have a little script for that, which is just rename open clips. So now I can see like the version name. Um, and then if we update our sources, you can see the full name of the shot there. So this one has updated and now that's on V2. Go to the next one. And then I got a hotkey to do the same thing. Okay, so that is fixed. That's version one. And then we'll go here, try to update this. And this one is not updating. So this is the one we're pretending is a, is a nuke render. So let's go look in the shot folder. I go to renders, here's my open clip, right? And if I preview this, this, there's only the version zero that was published. But what I can do is with this new script, I can add a version to it. So I can browse, pick my render folder. I can make sure it's version one. And then if there's a project file, I can add that here too. So I'm gonna select that. And you can see it's actually a nuke file. So I'm going to hit add this version. And now if I go here, we have a version one. And if I scroll all the way down here, you can see it's a new project. And if I go to my timeline and update it again, there's our version one. And we can see here also that my market is viewed. That's an it. Project oh, oh, the open clip editor or like the open clip. I know there's an open clip. Um, are you just editing the XML you via your script yes. there, or are you okay? Yes, yeah, exactly. The open clip is an XML wrapper around the uh, or, or a container, I guess, that points to all the appropriate files and metadata. It's great. Oh, yeah, oh, cool. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. No, <laughs> um, I'm not using the I found that I can't use the create clip uh thing because it. It just didn't work with publishing, but at least I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or not, but this seemed to be um, an easier way to get things to update in the timeline if I just like update the existing uh, open clip. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so now let's say this needs oh, to wait, be Oh wait, I see that. Too. I see what you're doing there. If you look at source setup. So if you if you go to create new version now. Well, I, I, this only works with batch files. But oh, okay. what I can do here is if it finds a nuke project, this little menu will come up. So I can say open a nuke. Dude. And it's, oh. it's just autom automatically open the nuke project. Um, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I will never get tired of hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we have a version one. Let's go ahead and make this version two. Uh, let's look at this little write node we have. Um, so you have kind of similar stuff that's in your open clip. So I have a path to my open clip. I can choose to update it. I can make it version two. And then I just want to make sure I uh, version up before I hit render. So let's just save it as a new comp. And now it's version two. If I hit render, and this shouldn't take too long, I should be able to jump back into flame once this is done, hit refresh, and we should have version two like automatically in our timeline. So it's almost done. Let's switch back. Okay, that should be done. And let's select our latest. And there we have version two. That's great. Cool. That Thanks. is great. And so, <laughs> um, one other thing I've been testing, and I don't know how useful this is, but I, I was thinking about a scenario where you send a shot to a freelancer and they send it back to you and, and the paths aren't the same. So if you wanted to fix that, I've been kind of tweaking this uh, script and it's called repair open clip paths. So let's say like, um, you know, we did this on a VFX server, but somebody rendered to like another server or another, um, uh, whatever, just another location. Um, mm -hmm. so I could, let's just break it intentionally. And now like, this is what happens, right? You, this is not where your setups are and this is not where your footage is. So you can repair that with this thing. So instead of edit, 
let's put it back to the VFX server. And as soon as it finds a path, this button goes blue uh, and it changes so we can find or replace those and fix those paths. There you go. It's fixed. Amazing. Yeah. It's great. Cool. I was always okay. so terrified of editing an open clip, you know, because it could break everything, yeah. but you're, you're demystifying it for me. It's yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, it was a little frightening, which is why I had like four different test projects going. Um, so I didn't break anything in a real project. <laughs> um, all right. So let's fast forward to, uh, Everything is approved. Let's, I'm just going to delete some of the stuff that we don't need to look at anymore. Um, and let's say, uh, actually, let's, let's say all the shots are done. I want to post these. Um, I have a couple of scripts. One is just, uh, it sets the in and outs automatically for you. So I'll just do postings in and outs because we just want like a frame of, of black at the head and tail. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that does it automatically for us. And then if I want to put these on frame IO and actually I'll just jump over to Chrome for a second. Um, you can see that there's no logic live project here, right? This, and this is my UC one, two, three, four, five, six logic live project does not show up here. But if I grab these clips and go to, um, frame IO and conform uploader, that's just a color correct, uh, color space thing. Um, so it's going to export these, um, as MP4s and it's going to create the project in frame IO, create a couple of different folders in frame IO, and then upload it automatically for you. So hopefully you'll see how quick this is, is all right. And I'm going to frame IO refresh and here's our project. If I go to media, here's our conforms and there's my three <laughs> files right here. God, it's just great. <laughs> and you, and this, you did this using just the frame IO API, like the, the, what's publicly yep. available from. Yeah. It's yeah. Wonderful. Lots of Google searching, but yeah, the frame IO APIs is actually really easy to work with. Um, all right. So let's say we posted this for clients and they want, made some comments like, um, looks great. Um, you know, they typically say that a lot, they never have comments. Yeah. 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 Especially on V1, all V1 renders there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to give a and shout then... out to the multiple Autodesk tabs you have open, which I you don't even have to go to them, but I know <laughs> that that's the, 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 the manual. It's the Python API and yeah. The, yeah, yeah, and the defines and everything. Fred is in uh, is watching and he's smiling. Yeah, yeah. He three <laughs> smiles for those three tabs that are open. All right, so um, I've just added comments to the thirty and the fifteen. Um, and now what I can do is if I grab these, um, I can right click, go back to frame IO and go to get comments and they're already in here. So like this one says, looks great. That one says <laughs> wonderful. Great. Um, and then if I look at the 15, there's the comment there too. Um, it also does a thing where it just color codes it. So if it does find a comment, it, it flags them as red. Um, the other thing that I like about this is sorry let, the the chat is going wild with this. You're you're you, you need oh, yeah. to take a moment and just and just appreciate oh, yeah. this. Yes, it's it's yeah. wonderful. Okay. This is the kind of thing I remember making a script a couple years ago that I mean through it, it was it. I think what it would do is it would download an XML or a CSV or something from. Frame yes. IO and then get the comments, but it was it was like five steps and you had to edit things. But this is just this is it, man. Oh, but um, I mean, I still I've kind of taken that script that you did and, and updated it, so you can do. Oh, there you it is. Can still do so, yeah, yeah. So that that lives on, um, oh, and it's still it's still useful. You don't have to like you can just straight download it. You don't have to like adjust the format or anything. Um, uh huh. So like it it is just download and load it up in Flame, and it, it's a uh, huge time this saver. This is great, man. This is great. Um, the other thing about this script is um, this is all version one. So if I make uh, just do my little hotkey to update the version and just kick those out again. All right. That, and let's look at this shell and you can um, read what it's doing once it's exported. It basically looks for um, a match. And if it finds it, it's going to automatically version stack it for you. 
So that just said new version oh added. God. Now, if I go here, see, it's like, <laughs> it's automatically stacked it for you. So if I had created a review link, th that would update automatically. So that's, that's like a giant time saver for us. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, the chat is great. I mean, like, it's just, uh, it, it's wonderful. You're, oh, yeah. Okay, you, nice. Yeah. Uh, it is absolutely, um, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I agree with Fred here. You know, Fred is saying his job to give you guys the tools to make this happen. And glad to see you're taking full advantage of it, John. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's just bravo. I think I have okay. two new sound effects. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right. So next, oh, somebody had recently asked me about um, slating and, and how I dealt with that. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's grab these um, and let's, uh, okay. So I got my three spots there. Um, and then this is um, the best way to do it. I mean, in my opinion, um, and it's, you know, it's, this is Mike V's uh, slate maker. Um, and yeah, this is just, just look how easy that is. Like your slates are right there. Um, so I'm going to drop those there. And then on top of this, I have a way to basically marry these. Um, and so I do this function right here. So you pick your real group, you pick your real, and then you pick where your sequences are. So I'm just going to hit copy and it's going to just drop those on and then delete the slates. Um, so that is my little slating workflow. Wonderful. Uh, thank you. And then, okay, let's check out um, a script I have that's called batch renamer, but it probably should be called like apply naming conventions. Oh, and then another actually quick little one. Um, if I right click this and I can um, automatically just replace the desktop and change the date, right? So it's, <laughs> that's another another little time saver. Um, and then actually let's look at this view so you can see all, all the names. Quick, quick question for you from, I see Mark yeah. put in the chat, <clears throat> the, how do we get that? The, the Mike V Slate or have you done anything on top of what Mike V did, or is that just uh, how you're using his uh, his Slate scripts? Um, I haven't done anything on top of his. I think I might have customized it for us just to uh, tweak some of the paths. But no, you mm -hmm. should, like the um, Mike V is on the uh, uh, portal, on the Logic portal. portal. Yeah, yeah. And then mine, I have a new version, so I should update it. But I believe it's called Desktop copy slates or something dumb like that. Um, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll put the, up upload the, the, uh, the latest version cause it's, it's a little, uh, cleaner code. It doesn't break as easily as the old one. Um, all right. So let's say it's, you just got name, everything is approved and you need to, um, uh, apply some naming conventions. What I have is you see renamer batch renamer. So in here, you can um, you have some tokens you can use, and then it'll give you like a little preview of what it's actually going to look like. So if I just hit rename, you know it's going to put the duration, aspect ratio, and then the the real name. Cool. So in this case, uh, web broadcast, and then surround. So if I just hit rename, it's going to very quickly change all of those and apply the the naming conventions. Oh God. So <laughs> It's great, um, but awesome. it's so simple. I mean, again, it, it, yeah. I'm not in any way trying to uh, you know, uh, minimize the work that you put into it, but it's really, if you think about it, it's just find and replace and you have the options for tokens and some of the tokens are mm -hmm. built in and some of them are just, you know, the, this, I'm calling this a token, but it's just the name of the real, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or the duration from, uh, from PyTime or whatever it is. That, that's mm -hmm. great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. The last necessity, one. necessity is the mother of invention, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. The last one I want to show is this um, UC BB archiving UI and uh, BB is for back burner. Um, and basically this is a super quick way to uh, archive multiple projects if you want. So I'm going to grab that test project that we made at the start of this. Um, and then I can pick like the segment size. Um, you could do a size estimate if you want, um, but I'm just going to hit BB archive and that immediately sends uh, the commands to the back burner. And if I switch over in time, oh no, it's already done and already emailed me that it's done. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, 
<laughs> that job has been archived. Um, the other thing I like about working like this is let's say I'm done for the day and uh, I want to, I had to jump between like three or four different projects. I can come in here, select them all and just hit restart. And that will just do everything for you. So you can just hit restart and you know close back burner log out and and you're done oh. and it'll just archive everything so it's like a way to queue up the archives that's great see i i've really only ever used back burner for importing exporting rendering i've never i've mm -hmm. never thought about using it for archive but that's that's a brilliant uh use case right there uh yeah to just Thanks. select the previous jobs and restart them and then you get a new oh that's mm -hmm. great i love yeah, it yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. All right. Perfect. I think that's all for me. Can we uh, check out how you're doing slates? Oh, sure. Man, I'm just like, I'm blown away. That was amazing. So yeah, let me, <laughs> let me switch over to, uh, I love seeing how other people use this stuff. I, I, it just gives you, it gives me a million ideas and gets me so jazzed and excited to, to, uh, yeah, yeah. to, you know, open up BB edit and get back to editing Python scripts. But I just want to say real quick, uh, Richard Betts just said this in the chat. Then I knew this logic lab was going to be amazing, but it has surpassed my expectations. Thanks, John. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. But yeah, let me show you um, how I've been doing slating. And uh, same thing. So I, I publish my shots out. And what I get uh, from my publish is just, is this, you know, it's just your uh, your source clip, the pre-render mux, and then the write file node that has all the, 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 um, the, the pathing in it and the time code that matches and everything. And so um, I have a, let me just open this up. I have a script here that does this. And I know at first it's like, like you know, oh goodness gracious, what is this mess? Um, but I found as I was doing uh, work, and, and especially this is like shot work, that um, this, this whole compass here does my like slating and my outputs for the client and the, 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 uh, the quick times at HD for like uh, for for approvals and, and uploads, I kept having to move this more further and further and further to the right <laughs> as my comp got more and more complicated. So I just mm -hmm. ended up doing like a, a hidden link or a, a hidden mux node rather, and put like all the slate stuff down here. So I get uh, you know what I get with the script is I get a, a neat video and then a pre render node that uh, right file node rather that puts the pre render wherever. It needs to go in the, the shot folder. Um, and then I kind of do all my comping here, but we were talking about slating. So uh, I know this seems like a, a bit of a mess, but again, it, you, you really should never have to do anything to a slate, you know? So it doesn't, it doesn't matter how complicated it is. But what I have here is um, uh, an action that just kind of gives me a little picture in picture. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a text node that puts on like the template and whatever the handles happen to be. Um, and then I have uh, two things here. I have a burn in metadata node for a description. And then I have this super awesome action node called versioner. So at the onset, there's nothing. Okay. But uh, there's a Python hook called, uh, uh, I, think, I think it's called on iterate or it's, uh, after, after iterate. So after you press iterate, it'll run whatever script has that, that hook included. So I have a script that will do this whenever you hit uh, iterate, all right? Nice. It fills out the slate for you. And so, wait, hold on for myself. Oh, you gotta press the button. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I actually need a button. Um, so let me just explain a little bit about what this, what this does, right? So uh, I have, I have this action node here that I happen to call, I had to call it something, so I call it um, versioner. And uh, what it has in here is a bunch of 3D text notes, okay? For all of those little bits of information, project, shot, version, range, file name, and date. And so uh, what, what happens in, uh, with, with Python is when I hit iterate, it looks throughout my, um, my batch group here, finds the action node called versioner, loads an action node setup that has those 3D text nodes and then fills in the 3D text nodes with whatever the information is. So for the date, it grabs today's date. For project, this is the project nickname for my job. The shot name is the name of the, um, the batch group minus uh, uh, the version number on the end. Then here's the version number on the end. And the frame range is the frame range. 
Um, and so if I go ahead and iterate this up, you can see it'll iterate it up, right? And that's just what's happening in the background when I press this. Uh, mm -hmm. And then for the description, um, I have a, a note here on this burn-in metadata node, right? And so oh, wow. what you do is you change this to whatever you want. You can, provided you... Uh, Okay, and then if I um, run another script that I have called up, update description, it updates the description. And I guess I need to make a change to the end. Yeah. But, um, you know, and this is something that you touched on, um, the, the, uh, that you touched on during your presentation is that is you can assign a hotkey to any Python script. And so if there's something that you're doing all the time, like changing the description or whatever, you can assign a, a hotkey to that. But that's what I got going on there. And then um, what I have here is this is the original write file node uh, from the publish. My script that builds this giant thing also takes the write file node and it, it extends the length of the comp by one frame. Because if you look at the source plate, wherever the hell I put it, I know I guess it is still too. Uh, maybe it doesn't anymore. All right, well, never mind. Forget, forget what I said. No, it um, yeah. it should somewhere. Well, I'll have to check. I guess it's not working. But what it was supposed to do is uh, extend the length of the comp by one frame, uh, mm -hmm. slip the time code back one frame to account for the slate, and uh, so that way everything still links up when you send it when you send it off to the client. So that's awesome. I love that. Cool. Well, uh, I wanted to see if. Anybody has any questions for John that we haven't uh, answered? Let me check the chat real quick. Yeah, da, da. I think it's just awesome stuff. <laughs> Thanks, John. What an excellent <laughs> presentation. Great work. Awesome stuff. And, uh, you know, what Richard said, which uh, I think yeah. is probably going to close that out. <laughs> yeah, this this oh. was really great. And um, Or maybe I guess I can ask you, what what when you first sat down to start learning Python. What was the first thing that you did? What was the first uh, like flame thing that you did when you went, oh, my God, it worked? I think it was rename, just renaming things. It might have been just like, because I, you know, in the in the Autodesk docs, there was like, oh, here's how to do some things. And that's just where I started. Um, and it was just like, if this is a company, but this and just like Python console hitting like play and it like doing changing like two things or doing a for loop. I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. You know? <laughs> totally. I remember uh, my big revelation breakthrough, whatever was changing the color of a compass. I mean, yeah. I was sitting on my couch, like on a Sunday or something like that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> just like lost my mind and then went and showed my family and they were you know, blown away right that, that's great dad if you're happy we're happy that kind of thing Sweet. yeah well that's thank awesome. you very much i really appreciate this and uh yeah, thank you my for everything you've, you've uh you've contributed to the logic portal again i encourage everybody to check out the logic portal and um i'm going to give away some prizes and uh, we'll see john over uh in the post show in uh, a couple of minutes thanks so much john cool. all it. right thanks andy all right we have two things to give away today. The first is we have a month of Logic Academy Pro. Let me shuffle up. Man, you know, it doesn't matter how many how many screens you have, you never have enough screens. Hold on, let me shuffle the names. And here we go. Yes, all right. And Anthony. Congratulations, Anthony. And uh, next up, whoa, how to use the wheel spinner. There we go. <laughs> oh, we go a little slower. It's a live show. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I can't break the loop. Wow. This is amazing. Look at this. All right, well, I... I will spin the wheel at some point on my own and uh, and give somebody, i uh, let you know who won the other, uh, the license of optics from our friends at Boris FX, makers of the very comfortable t-shirts. All right, like I've said, it's a live show. Wow, this is great. Well, friends, 
Uh, the only thing I was going to show you in the slideshow is that coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, I believe it's on the 25th of February, Sunday the 25th. He's checking his notes. Yes, Brian Bailey is going to come back on Logic Live. So be sure to check that out. And um, thank you to John Gearing. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Yes, the wheel of names has become <laughs> self-aware, right? Oh, my God. That's AI for you. My friends, thank you very much. Uh, it's been great hanging with you. Thank you, John. Uh, have a great flame week, everybody. And we'll see you on the forums. Take care, all. Bye-bye. And we'll see you in Chicago on Wednesday.